So, what do we have today? Let's focus on that. So, today, we're talking about one of them. I'm Ryan, this is Tom, and we're talking about really, really frivolous things. Yes, that's right, it's the Tuesday Preview Review. What the fuck is that supposed to mean? That means that's what I wrote down. <laughs> that means we're looking at equipment. We're pretending we're looking at equipment and judging it by its specs because... Because that's what you all like so much. Who it is. None of these things are at haunts for us to play with yet. I don't care about these things. That's why they're frivolous and that's what makes this so much fun! Nope. So, Sony, in its infinite wisdom, is taking on Leica in the monochrome, mirrorless, small format, high price tag camera for some reason. Yeah, I don't understand this. Yeah, uh, so it's a rumor still. Sony is calling this the RX-1. It's a black and white. What? So I don't know where the rumor of it being black and white would have come in. Like, that's very weird for me. It, it's very weird. I'd be very no, surprised I, if this is true. It doesn't make sense that anyone would make a black and white digital camera. No, it makes camera. sense that Leica would make a black and white digital camera. Leica. Okay, Leica and Holga, maybe, but that's about it. Well, yeah. I don't know why. I mean, I, I guess Sony could be doing that. They have the money to throw at such things. And, and you know what? They probably see people using the Leica M and going, we, we could do that. On this. Yeah. We could do that. We could do it slightly cheaper and, and get and more of our cameras out better. there. Yeah. And way better, because Sony actually does make some decent equipment. Yeah, the Leica M monochrome, which we're referencing, is an $8,000 18-megapixel CCD, which shoots in black and white. Has the nice Leica minimalist design. Yeah, that's it. That's yeah. all its redeeming factors. Yeah. Whereas the Sony one is going to have a 24-megapixel sensor. And they haven't announced a price yet, but I can just about guarantee you it's going to be way less than $8,000. Mm-hmm. It's probably in the closer to two, though. Yeah, but the market they're, market they're targeting is willing to shell out eight. They'll probably gladly shell out two. I mean, they could just have a bunch of CCD sensors around that they want to get rid of. That's true. From old cameras, I wouldn't be surprised. Yep. I, that's, yeah, our, that's, that, that, that's our big that's uh, product. You know, yeah. we don't understand why anyone would make this or buy this. Uh, but it gives us a chance to put it on the board for more money than Brains Club, which is really the whole point of doing this today. So, just like last week, I've got a little tabulation sheet here. We actually have a number of cameras to go through today, because we forgot to set our baseline last week. So, we got to do our baseline as well this week. <laughs> We're going to look at the Sony RX-1 monochrome, the rumored the Sony RX-1 theoretical RX1 camera. We're going to put Must a be. theoretical, we'll, we'll put an asterisk next to it on the board, <laughs> so that we can say this was done based on yeah. rumors, not an that's, actual camera. That's a good idea. Same rules as last week. Same rules as we'll always have for this, unless we change the rules. I guess that's... Okay. Yeah. Score is 1 through 60. 1 is extremely useful. Uh, 60 is totally frivolous. Should never spend your money on it. You can yep. rate it anywhere in between. Uh, for taking selfies. For people who would. For people who would take selfies. What are we on? The, the Sony theoretical monochrome? On the, on the Sony theoretical monochrome. This is actually the, the highest category for said. Yeah. Well, no, second highest. 30. You can give it a 30? Uh, I actually would give it a 35 because I think the people who would do that are the same hipsters who invented the selfie. I think they're in the next category. The photo enthusiasts. Mm -hmm. Yep, I, I would bet that a, a, someone who calls themselves a photo enthusiast would be changing all of their pictures to black and white. So I'm going to go 40. All right. I'm going to give it a 35 again, just because I think they're at about the same level. And you're bad at math. The next level. Makes my math easier. Someone the semi-pro. Considers themselves to be selling pictures in some way. Yeah. I mean, enthusiasts can too. This is going to be like a 20. All right. I agree with you on the 20, because you might be selling your pictures in black and white, but you should still be taking. Your wedding photographer. This, you. So, 
This is kind of, does it, it always just takes some black and white, but does it store the color data to be able to change the black and white? Like, I don't, I've no, never had. No, if, if, it, if it's based on, uh, on fighting with the Leica monochrome, it only stores in black and white. Well, I understand, but. In black and white raw. Can you change the, the color gradient of where in black and white it's taking? Like, I'm, I'm very I, curious what the Leica M actually does. Because black and white, you can change your color, your color tones a lot. I don't know. Uh, let's let's say you can do that. Oh, yeah. Uh, wedding photographers, um, no. Ten. Wait. Those scores are good. Oh. Yeah. So these should be 50s, frivolous, not 20s. Yeah, frivolous stress. Yeah, 50s. 20%. So. So 50s. Yeah, I'm going to go 58 for wedding photographers. Almost completely useless. Yep. All right. I'm going to stay at 50 again. It's a niche. I mean, it's, 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 it's definitely a, it's a, a niche. bad gimmick. Let's put it that way. For an event photographer. 59. You just want to make my math hard, don't Absolutely. you? Absolutely. Uh, I'm just going to give him a 60. It is useless for an event photographer. And a sports photographer or photojournalist? I'm going to go 58 again. 58. And I'm going to give him a 55. Because... I don't know. I, for some reason, in my head, I'm thinking photojournalist. I'm thinking it could be on the front page of the New York Times, black and white. Although nytimes.com would be in color. No, it wouldn't. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, sure. All right. No real argument. All right. Our no Sony RX1, black and white. Ryan gives it a 49.3. And I gave it a 55.8. That 30 you gave it at the beginning, and then that other 40 kind of. Mm -hmm. I'm okay with it. Which gives it a composite score of 52.6. Sounds about right to me. And I put an asterisk here for the, for, for the fact that it's based on a rumor. And I'll do that all the way through, so okay. Yeah, okay. These are going to go on the board when we're done with this today. Yeah, just right over, over this way. Yep, right over there to the board. Its competitor, the only other thing that's even remotely close to it, the Leica M that we know does exist. <laughs> they do exist. We know the Leica M exists because you can buy it at Adorama or B&H. <sighs> so, at $8,000 for an 18 megapixel black and white camera, people who take selfies. 50. Uh, I'm gonna give them a 45. Because if you have that much money to burn, take some selfies. For the photo enthusiast. 50. 50. For the semi-pro. 55. 60. For a wedding photographer. 57. I hate you. 60. <laughs> For the event photographer. 56. <laughs> 55, just because I want to screw with the numbers. <laughs> and for your sports photographer or photojournalist, if you say anything other than 60, I'm going to smack you. <laughs> Not completely useless. Because <laughs> it still takes pictures. Yep. No. <laughs> it's not useless. It's the frivolousness. Okay. The frivolousness is the scale. So it's almost completely frivolous. Not totally frivolous, but about as close as you can get to being frivolous, completely and totally. Because I use improper rounding and only one significant digit, Ryan gave it a 54.5, and I gave it a 55 even, <laughs> for a composite score of 54.8, because I don't give 0.75s. <laughs> sure. <laughs> 54.8. Here, go put that on the board. This is the important part of having the board up. Uh, we have to rate our own equipment this week. Which is obviously... We're, we're going to give it ones, because we're perfect. One of them, maybe. Which, which camera do you want to do first? Yours. Okay, we will start with the Canon 6D. Which I would argue is slightly more frivolous than the 610. For people taking selfies because they are the bottom of the photography world. 
45. You'll get no argument there. It's way too much camera for someone to take a selfie with. I can't even, like to me, I've done it. Like, I've done it. I've done it, but my arm's too short. I'm gonna put the 50 millimeter on I it. can do it with the 2470. No one can do it with the 70 to 200s. I don't know why I said that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, for a photo enthusiast. 30, 30, I think. It's, it's expensive. It's still expensive. It's expensive, but it is a full frame camera. Photo enthusiasts can do very well with a crop sensor. I know they can. Uh, I'm going to give it a 32. For the semi-pro. 25. It's still a lot of camera, but it's more reasonable when you consider you might make money with it at some point. See, and for that argument, I'm giving it a 10. You could do most of the job somebody would do who's not a full-time professional with a 70. You could. That's my... You could, but I think it's a, actually a really good go-to for a semi-pro. I think it's it's right there. It's it's that uh, first full frame you can get. For velocity, I think there's a cheaper camera that will do just as well for what they're doing. All right. Mm -hmm. For the wedding photographer. So, I'm going to go with like a 7. All right. And the reason it's not lower is there are used solutions. You could buy a 5D Mark II. Okay, but even a used 5D Mark II is more expensive than a 6D new. I know this because I looked at the two options. Yes. Uh, I, I'm going to uh, stick with 10 like I did with the Semi Pro because I think it's actually a very, very good wedding camera. It is. All right, plus it has pretty decent low light. Absolutely. Which is key there. Uh, for an event photographer. This is a tough one. I thought a 10. You get a 10? I will give it a 10 because I have shot plenty of concerts with mine, and it does a phenomenal job. Yeah. About the only thing I could ask for, for it to do better, is just more frames per second, and that's just something I knew I gave up when I... I it, just because yeah. sometimes when it's, you're at a concert, it's spray and pray time. It's tough because it's not frivolous, especially in the Canon ecosystem. Yeah. It, it keeps a little bit of frivolousness because it's in the Canon ecosystem. Yeah, okay. Now I see why you're not giving things ones. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I know how cheap my equipment is and how much it. And for a sports photographer. It's, it's sports are kind of a weird subject for. Or, or photojournalist. Because it's, it's that top echelon. It's a, it's a strange camera to, to rank in that because it's. It really it's is. It's not a pro camera. So it's. Is it slightly frivolous as a backup camera maybe? But I'll go back to. Five. I think it's a good it's a good camera. Do we have a five? Yeah. You realize that's super, super good. I do. Okay. I think I think it's it's very unfrivolous for that level. Good. I think it's more frivolous for an event photographer. Alright. For for a Yeah. I, I think, you know, as a backup body, absolutely it'd, it'd be a one as a backup body. And even as a primary, unless you're unless you're spray and pray, and it's actually pretty good. It focuses pretty quick. Yep. So I will go with the five on there with you. The Canon 6D, you ready for this? You did it in one minute. Oh, sorry, wrong show. Um, Ryan rates my Canon 6D at a 20.3. I rate it at an 18.7. That gives the Canon 60 a 19.5. At the moment, the top of the leaderboard. Very impressive. And now for the thing that will probably knock it out of the top spot, the Nikon D600 slash 610. Because they're the same thing. <laughs> yes. So I'm, I'm rating them the same. I'm, I'm giving them one, one rating. I mean, I guess in the frivolous scale, they're really not the same thing, but... If you were to buy it right now, you'd buy a 10, not a 600. Unless you got a 600 that had been repaired. Uh, no. When it comes to people who take selfies. Frivolousness. Still 45. All right. I, I put it up there with the six. I say you don't need to spend that much money to take pictures of yourself. When we start talking about the enthusiast, I, I will jump ahead of you here because I think I'm going to drop that down to a 25. I'm going to go 20. 
All right, on the semi pro. Full on eight. Full on eight. <laughs> For the money. For the money, you For probably money. can't do better than a 610 right now. It gets a five. That's the best score I've ever given anything, and I gave it to my own six. Yeah, it's and not even at that level. It's still it's still slightly frivolous for somebody who's not making a lot of money all the time. I don't think so. I think if you're making money off your camera, that is the camera to have in your bag. It's you can do the same job with a D seventy three hundred for a lot of things. Sure, but it's very unfrivolous to upgrade. So yeah, this all is right. where it's gonna get. This is where things are gonna get really really yeah. fun. The wedding photographer. So. The reason why my score is ridiculously low is because, I haven't given it yet, but I, there's, there's reasoning very specifically. At the moment, the competitors in full frame cameras for low light, and just wedding in general, not, I'm not talking full on low light event, because that obviously falls to the 5D3. Low light capability, you have the Nikon DF, which is the hipster, shaped camera, which is one of top three best low light performances of any SLR ever made. Yep. D4S, 1DX, 5D Mark III. So there's three cameras that are ridiculously expensive. One camera which is still really expensive and doesn't shoot video and looks like a camera from the 70s. And then there's the D610 versus the 6D. Yep. There's what, $800 difference between them? What was the 60 retail? Uh, 1800 right now. Is it down? Yeah. I, what did it start with? 24 when it, it was started? It was 24 when it first came right. out, but it's, it's 18 so this, now because I wouldn't have bought it if it was over two that's grand. That's what I mean. So they're roughly two to four dollars apart depending on where you buy them. So for a wedding, this, this D600 is one of the best money to quality ratio things that's ever existed. Because there aren't really competitors in his bracket. There's competitors that are at 18 megapixels and have really good low light, or there's competitors at 36 megapixels with the 800. There's like there's nothing that really fits the slot of the D600. So for weddings, it's like a two. A two, damn. All right. Uh, I'm gonna stick to five again. Mm -hmm. I can't argue with anything you said there. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's, it's, just, it's honestly, it's it's a great camera for it. It does very well. I bash Nikon a lot, but that's okay. For event photography. So, for the same reasons, you either go 36 megapixels. Yep. Or you go to Canon, which the lens ecosystem is more, more expensive. But it's not really frivolous, it's just more expensive. Yep. Um, I'll go back to a 5. Because at an event, you can... Spend more money sometimes. So I haven't shot yours in an event yet, so this is actually kind of a. It runs very similar to yours. I think the layout is much less retarded, monkey. But yeah, and you, and and having a little more selection in the autofocus is very nice for, for events. You. Yeah, yeah. I'm a little more limited in my. If, no, that's not better than yours. You have way more AF points on yours. Because yours you cover can, more of the screen, though. Mine cover more of the screen, which matters more. Oh, trust me, that's the autofocus system of a D7000. That's fucking terrible. <laughs> that's, that's, it's Achilles' heel, it's the autofocus system. It's, but it's, All right. they're both very good at events. So it's, I, 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 I got to try and save my, my six here a little bit. You're going to get a 10. Yep. That's, I'm still not going to save the six. It's gonna, this thing's going to knock it out of the water. And then for sports photography. Like, I, I don't know sports well enough to, like, judge it against the other high-end professional Don't you used to shoot cameras. baseball? I wouldn't call that that. But um, I'll go back to uh, eight. I'll go back eight. to an eight. Uh, I haven't tried to use yours on something high speed, like catching a, a but pitch. Six frames a second. The auto but six frames a, a little second. tricky, but it gets there. Uh, I'm just going to kind of treat it like I treat my... my uh, my six, assuming that it works relatively close, because I'd love to take yours on some high-speed shooting, and it will stay right about in the same spot. I'll give it a seven. I've done the math. Not necessarily happy to see this. Um, Ryan rates the Daikon D600 or 610 
as a 14.7. That is the lowest score anything has ever gotten from one of us. And probably will. And probably will stay there unless Nikon releases like a $4 version of the D4S that's perfect. Because then it would be like one. <laughs> uh, I, on the other hand, gave it a 16.2. Um, I still rated it better than the Canon 6D. So, obviously I'm not that biased because I rated it better with my own camera. Give us a final score on the Nikon D600 or 610 at 15.5. In that, in the frivolous category, you do have a couple of ups, and they're called Wi-Fi and GPS. Yes. Uh, both of those things are extremely frivolous. As much as I would use GPS occasionally, I, I use it when I go out to shoot places, and I use it for my first like dozen or so test shots. And, oh, I agree. And I, then, I then I turn it off to save the battery because I can go in Lightroom and just say, yes, copy these GPS locations. Or, thing. or you can just use a map. Or that. But I'm lazy. And it's there. Yeah. And you have it already. So, But it is, yes. it is a frivolous feature, if there ever was one in an SLR. Yes. So let's cut over to the big board and see where these things fall. We're here at the big board. I did it upside down. I will fix it eventually. Uh, it should be the red on the top. I wasn't paying attention. I printed it out and I said, screw it, it's staying that way. So, the first camera we reviewed today was the rumored Sony RX1. It does have my little asterisk. It's a 52.6, which puts it just above the Leica T. Our next one was the Leica M monochrome. Uh, I thought nothing would ever score lower than the Leica T. I was wrong. There's the Leica M at the bottom. My favorite little camera in the world, the Canon 6D, goes up here way at the top. 19.5, doesn't get much better than that. Does not get much better than that. And then you've got the, uh, uh, just, I'm just gonna forget that the, this is a Nikon thing. Uh, we gotta leave a little space. Something might be better than the D600. Someday, something might be better than the D600, but right now it is the king of the leaderboard, and I challenge any camera manufacturer out there to beat that. And you can beat that very soundly by sending me a free camera. Just saying. But, here's the big board. You can see where things lie. You can also check this out over at AperturChat.com. And Ryan and I will see you tomorrow. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.